Jessie with Calvert Library. Thank you so much for joining me for an episode of It's Elementary, where we explore a topic by reading a book and doing an activity together. Today's story is called Over and Under the Pond. It's written by Kate Messner and illustrated by Christopher Silas Neal. We want to give a big thank you to Chronicle Books, the publisher, for giving us permission to record this story today. So let's dive right in. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there? I ask. Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes. Whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Cuckoo-ree! Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low-hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There, on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, Tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster-fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far-off loon calls goodnight. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish, 
and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. At the end of the book, the author includes some great information about all of the animals that she talked about in the story. If you're interested, please pause the video and read about the different kinds of animals. Have you seen any of these in your area? The author also includes some other books and resources with information for further reading. I love this book not only because the pictures are so beautiful, but because we learn about so many different kinds of plants and animals. So for our activity today, I would love for us to go on our own nature walk through our neighborhoods or possibly a nearby park. I went ahead and wrote down 10 things on my nature scavenger hunt list. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here I have my nature scavenger hunt that I've put together. You can pick the same things that I have on my list to look for in your neighborhood, or you can swap them out to things you'd like to see if you can find. I've also drawn some little doodles of each item. The first one I have here is a tree taller than me. That shouldn't be too hard. I have a lot of trees in my neighborhood. The second thing on my list is a body of water, maybe a lake, a creek, or even a puddle. The third thing would be a bird. And then I have a wildflower, maybe a dandelion. Number five is a seed. Number six, a cloud. Let's see what kind of clouds I can find. Number seven, I have a bug, maybe a butterfly or a bumblebee. Number eight, I put a rough object, like maybe a crunchy leaf. Number nine, I have a smooth object, like a stone. And number 10, I have dirt. So let's go see what I can find in my neighborhood. Okay, I'm out in my neighborhood. I've been walking around. I've already found two things on my list. I found a cloud. It's a very cloudy day. And I found my rough object, which is this rock. And now I think I see two more things I can cross off my list that are behind me. What do you think those are? I found a body of water. and a bird, all those geese behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and find the rest of the things on my list, but I hope that you guys get outside and go on your very own nature walk. Thank you so much for tuning in to It's Elementary today. Keep an eye on Calvert Library's social media for more ideas and activities.